welcome to Shamba Shepherd Uganda. We are traveling all over Uganda to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to make their farms more productive and adapt to climate change. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice and turn their farms around into a profitable business while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience on the Shamba Shape Up Uganda! Uganda. Agi, hmm. have you ever desired to live free with nature and in the countryside? Yes, but don't we all, Frob? Well, our farmer today, even though he has a degree in natural resources, mm. decided to live on his farm and quit the corporate lifestyle. I wonder what could have inspired him to do that. <laughs> it all started with 200 eggs. 200 eggs? Mm. Follow me and I'll tell uh, you. Frob, wait, mm. were they like chicken eggs or duck eggs? This week, we are in Nama One village. We have come here to meet Mr. Chuan Kalavas Kowaiswa, who resides on a two-acre plot of land. It is evident that his passion lies in poultry farming, as his farm is dominated by a poultry house that has the capacity to house 2,700 birds. However, currently, it only accommodates 250 birds. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Yes. hello. Mr. Lavasco? Yes, you are wonderful. Nice morning. Nice morning. Nice morning. Nice to meet you too. Nice yes, yes. We are from Shamba Shepa. Yes. Uh -huh. I got you. Oh, yeah. you. <laughs> Good. Yes. Mr. Lavasco, yes. I would like to know the challenges you have on your farm. One of the biggest challenges mm -hmm. is the poor quality of, of the chicks. Chicks, okay. okay. The other challenge is the cost of feeds. And another one is the outbreak of diseases. Mm. Diseases, okay. yes, yes, yes. Uh, one of the other challenges in, far, in crop farming is the weather, mm -hmm. unpredictable weather. Yes. For example, this season, uh, I planted maize, beans, and sweet potato. Mm. Now, of the three, the bean is, is gone completely. It's too much rain. So, during pod development, a lot of water accumulated in the pods. Mm. We lost. Mm. For the cows, I'm trying to put up the materials for construction of a, a, a dairy shed. Mm. Mm. I try as a farmer, okay. mm. and we all try as farmers, yes. mm. that we put all the best resources to what we want to invest in. That's true. Ah. That's true. Yes. Lucky for you, we don't come alone. Mm. We That's come true. with some experts. Good. So I'm very sure most of these challenges we can deal with. Mm. Eh. Good, as they said that uh, instead of giving someone fish, <coughs> teach the person how to catch ah. them. Now let oh, us go and see. call these other people. <laughs> then we come back. Then they come. Is it okay? Oh, Fine. Ah, good. <laughs> okay. 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 okay, later. Good. Right. Clearly, Lavasco has encountered some difficult situations. He currently has 130 birds, some of which are ready for sale. However, these birds are not uniformly grown and appear weak. Could this be caused by inbreeding? Farmers often engage in inbreeding of their birds in an attempt to reduce on the cost of buying new chicks. To address this issue, we have invited Hassan from Kenchik to provide us with guidance on how to ensure the production of healthy birds. Hassan, yes, you've looked at the birds. What have you observed? I will first appreciate uh, Mr. Mr. Vasco for the good job. It's not something so easy, mm. though a few elements I've observed. Eh? One is about the hygiene. Hygiene is not up to date. I noticed as I was coming in, our foot bath. Mm. It's dysfunctional. You it's put it, you put it, but unfortunately, like you said, it's dysfunctional. Yeah, it's dysfunctional. So you always need to use it at all times. Chicken is so delicate, we need to have the best hygiene. Two, I've realized there are less feeders and drinkers, you know, so. Whenever we're having birds, we need to have the right number, like the right number of feeders, the right size mm. at every stage, okay? Then three, I've seen the poor uniformity or the uneven growth, mm. you know? Mm. Some birds are small, then mm. others are bigger. Mm. So it will cost you in that some will reach the size of selling and others will have to wait until they attain the size uh, of the way to be sold. What are the solutions? Um, we talked about the hygiene. Eh? Make sure you change that litter timely, 
whenever you find that you can no longer see any bit of the original type of litter used, mm -hmm. just know that litter is wasted. Mm -hmm. So you need to change it. Then two, we talked about uh, the feeders and drinkers, okay? Mm -hmm. It is recommended to have one feeder and one drinker for every 50 birds. Adjust the height of the drinkers and feeders to the birds back level as the birds grow. Now, if you've rectified the feed, you need to look at the breed. Some people, they tend to this, this issue of inbreeding. Do you know what inbreeding is? Oh, yes, ah. I understand. Okay. Uh, it's a, a situation whereby birds uh -huh. from the same family, exactly. so a sister to a brother exactly. or a brother to a mother or a father mm. to mm. the daughter, exactly. such that the farmer reproduces fertilized eggs. That will bring a lot of challenges, especially in the uniformity of growth. You get a lot of poor uniformity and get started mm. growth. So where did you pick your chicks? Oh, you did inbreeding. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yes. didn't do inbreeding. Yes, yes. Yeah. But uh, I got these chicks from a renowned farmer oh. and I, I booked okay. from him mm. the old chicks. Mm. And that could be the reason as to why mm. these observations have been made. Good news is that we have Ken Chick. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we have Ken Chick. Ken Chick is bringing you Kendros because, in regards to what you're rearing, we bring you something in line with what you're rearing. So, our dual purpose bird is called the Kenbro. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yes, the Kendro is a dual purpose bird which can both lay and also give you meat. Mm -hmm. So you, so you can choose to either sell um, to either sell for meat or to wait longer and get eggs. Okay. Our Kendro chicks, they come pre-vaccinated. Mm -hmm. They come pre-vaccinated against gumboro, <laughs> infectious bronchitis, Marex, and Newcastle disease. Four vaccines at a go. So it will give your chick the best kickstart. Another thing about Kendros, yeah. I need to tell you, is that our birds, they have been calculated that they eat 7.5 kilograms to 8.5 kilograms for that period of 10 weeks from day one. That's hmm. And they'll give you 2.5 kilograms yeah. of weight. Hi, Hassan. Yes. All this is so beautiful, but wait. How many birds did you get in the first place? I brought a hundred and seventy. Okay. How They're many do old. we have now? Currently, oh. I have a hundred and thirty. Oh no. That means I have lost forty. Oh no. It's a big number. It's eh? a big number. Yeah. And, 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 and that's really, that's really number sad. Salary to contribute for my loss. I have a solution for you, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'll be right back. Keep keep helping him. Uh, oh Don't please him. please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> These are 50 Kenbro chicks, fully vaccinated and healthy. I cannot wait to see the excitement on his face. <laughs> Lavasco. Yes. Hassan. Yes, 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 Agi, you're back. Yes, I am. Oh, oh you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, wow. Lavasco. Yes. For the 40 birds you lost. Yes. I got you 50. Oh, this is great yeah. for my lost birds. Yes, but I have one question. Yes. Do you have where to do the brooder from? Oh, oh. you're full. Your full capacity? Available. Ah, perfect. Available. Yeah. perfect. So could you lead us there? We go. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You're very happy now? I can't even dance. Ah, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> oh, this is the place. The Vasco showed us the brooder and we found Caris already waiting for us. Hassan advised us to clean and make it neat for the chicks. Caris stepped, sprayed with a disinfectant. Built a brooder and provided a source of heat. The chicks were finally in their new home and they seemed very excited. We are so much good to go. The chicks are healthy. So, Lavasco! Lavasco currently owns one cow, which he takes out for grazing in the neighborhood. However, this practice brings many challenges. He knows this and plans to switch to zero grazing. He has bought some materials to construct a cow shed, but does not know how. To shed light on this matter, we have invited Nakazi Christine from Naro. 
Is this the only grazing area that you keep it around or you always take it to other grazing areas? I do here you because do here. this is a, it's becoming an urban area. Mm -hmm. uh, there is lack of space, lack one. Of then space. two, mm -hmm. for the little that is available, people have planted their crops. So you mean you don't have a shed of its own? It's under construction. It's it under is not oh. yet finished. Oh. Yes. We shall get there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are there any challenges you face with this kind of setup? Yes, when I keep my animal outside like this, not permanently in the shed, yes. uh, I, I'm not sure of the safety. True. Oh. And you can't keep <laughs> around throughout the day yes. looking after mm. it. So, Madam Christine, yeah. you've listened to Mr. Chwanuka's mm. problems. Yeah. Is there a way we can help him solve? Okay. When you look at this animal, it's a male and mm. a castrate. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes. Okay. So. Being a male and a castrate, mm. you're keeping it, but the economic yield from it mm. may not justify the input yeah. in terms of labor, in terms of feed. The mm. best for this kind of animal would be just a feedlot arrangement where you rear it for a few months mm. and it reaches slaughter weight and you sell it off. Mm. If we want to make economic sense, the best would be choosing a good breed of a diary animal. I would recommend Mr. Chuanuka mm. to think of moving slowly into a, 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 a better performing animal, mm. which is a female this time. Mm. Like he said, this is not the best yes. for proper production. First of all, the animal is exposed to bad weather. Mm. You see how it is threatening to, to rain. Mm. If he's not here, all the rain will go on, go on it. it. If it is too much sunshine, there is no even shed here. Shed, yes. And animals naturally love sheds. Mm. So right here, this is not the best setup. But we appreciate that mm. it's a step towards where he wants to go. Okay. Secondly, when you talk to farmers that have their animals fully confined, the rate that we need to spray them per month goes down. Okay. And that one also now helps us to save more in the pocket. True. So if a farmer that is grazing out there is meant to spray every after two weeks, mm. the one that has confined their animal mm. may need to spray once oh. in a month. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Christine. Mm. Luckily for Mr. Chuanuka, he has a neighbor, Mr. Edward, who has a cow shed. So oh. I don't know if it is ideal if we can go and visit him. That's a good idea. Thank you very we much. Can move with him. You can leave this. You come and go. Oh, okay. Yes. On his farm, he has one cow, but we are here for the structure. The cow shed has all the qualities that would make Lavasco a successful dairy farm. Is it ideal? Oh, yes, Mr. Chuanka, come closer. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this is a cow shed that we told you about. Yes. This cow shed has some specifications that I can take you through. Okay. When you look at from here up to here, this is the width and it should be four feet. The animal should be able to move in front and move back without okay. turning around. Okay. In terms of length, it can stretch as long as seven feet. It is four feet by seven okay. feet. Okay. I'm also here to remind you that you can use locally available materials to make this shade. Ah, okay. Another important aspect of a cow shade are these troughs. It is always important to have separate troughs for feeding and drinking to avoid confusion. When feeding the cow, chop the grass thoroughly and make it slightly wilted under the sun. The trough should not be so deep mm. where the animal cannot access the feed. Mm. Neither should it be raised too high that the animal has to pick it from here. The height should be that natural grazing height. We also need to realize that the water trough should be located where the water can get some sun. That helps the water to keep not so cold and animals enjoy water which is not so cold. Okay. Whoa. So that is a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So let's take a deep dive down into the details. A good cow shed should have a sloping floor that helps waste to drain away. A roof over the sleeping and feeding area to protect your cows from sun and rain and dedicated space for cows to move around comfortably. Moving to zero grazing, which means keeping your animals in a shed and bring the food to them instead of taking them out for grazing, means they use less energy looking for food and this will help them produce more milk.
Welcome back to uh, Shamba Shape Up Uganda. <coughs> We've seen how to avoid inbreed if you are rearing poultry breeds like Kenbrew on your farm and how to build a good zero grazing cow shed. But we also still want to find out what are the steps taken if you want to plant beans for commercial farming and how to keep all these enterprises in account with good record keeping. I'm excited about these new challenges. And let's go do it. Yep. What is that wonder crop you should have on your farm? It fixes nitrogen in the soil, makes the soil fertile for other plants, it has iron and it is very nutritious. If you guessed beans, you are right. With good variety on the market, you may think we are safe, but with the changing weather patterns, farmers are still making losses. To prevent that, we have invited our expert, Mr. Mugaga from National Agriculture Research Organization, NARO, to show us how to plant beans and where best to plant which varieties in Uganda. Uh, I can see you already seen our, gar our garden of beans. Yeah, I've seen your <laughs> family garden. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Wow. What I've seen here is not what we recommend for beans. This is actually not a bean garden. Possibly it's a maize garden. The predominant crop here is maize, so it's not actually a bean garden at all. Uh, Mr. Mugaga, yes, Labaska is already harvesting. Yeah. From here? I've seen, but here, seen. what I'm seeing here is not what you should be harvesting. A, a nice habit, a plant like this one should have a minimum of about 20, 20 pods. But you know, look at two, this one with yeah, two yeah, seeds, two, 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 two pods. seeds so and two pods. Good. Yeah. yeah so yeah. can you now follow me and I show you how to make it so that you can have the best harvest. Ah, a minimum okay. of 20, 20 pods. Ah, this okay, let's go then. Sure. It is good practice for smallholder farmers to intercrop beans with other crops on the garden. But Mr. Mugaga is going to demonstrate how to plant beans as a monocrop. Yeah, this is what I've prepared for you uh -huh. to see how we plant beans. Eh? Ah. Okay? okay? Davasco? Yes. What type of bean had you planted? I planted narrow bean varieties, yes. Mr. Mugaga? Yes, please. How would you advise uh, uh, Lavasco and which variety is good for this type of soil? Narrow as it is, there so many varieties, and they are all good. But uh, farmers choose depending on where they are. In Uganda, there is regional preference. With weather affecting regions differently, Mugaga went on to provide guidance on where to plant each variety of narrow bean in Uganda. Narrow bean one, narrow bean two, and narrow bean three are recommended for cultivation in the western, eastern, and central regions. Narrow bean 4C and 5C, which are climbing varieties, thrive in the mountainous regions of Mbale, Kabale, and Renzori. Narrow bean 6 and 7 are best suited for drier regions and are known to thrive in the northern region. What are some of those best practices that we farmers we should put in mind to optimize our yields, mm -hmm. given what you've seen in the field? Mm -hmm. uh, Lavasco. Looking at your garden there, yeah. uh, I did not appreciate. From now on, we will take it as the gospel and let it be your Bible. Like this is how we manage the beans, and this is what I'm going to show you, and this is how you will be doing it. Plus, all those ones seeing us, yeah. this is what should be done. Ah, yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Mugaga. We have had all the theories, but now let's get these beans into the ground. When preparing the land, Dig the manure into the soil a month before planting. This allows the manure to add organic matter early. Space the rows 50 centimeters apart and dig the fallows. After making the shallow fallows, apply dry compost manure or fertilizer. Use 50 kgs of fertilizer per acre. Cover fertilizer lightly with a thin layer of soil, then place the beans 10 centimeters apart. Measuring with a stick, cover well with soil. A farmer with small seeded varieties needs 20 kilograms, medium seeded varieties about 25 kilograms, and large seeded about 30 kilograms per acre. All this with good farming practices, proper spacing, weeding, pest and disease management, one can harvest between 8 and 12 bags of 90 kgs. In summary, one, when you are going to plant your beans, know which seed, where to get the seed, and where you are going to plant. Uh, then plant 
We say the spacing between one row and the other is 50 centimeters, and from one row to the other, 10 centimeters. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much, okay. Mr. Mugaga. Thanks, Agu. See, a successful farmer needs to have good records and track incomes and expenditures on the farm if it is to run at full capacity. Uh, Mr. Lavasco. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have your records? Yes, I have. Uh, please them. come join us. Good. You see, farming is a business. Good thing we have Mr. Gerald from Naro to tell us more about it. Come join us, please. This is your seat. Thank you. Good, good, good. Uh huh. So, this is Mr. Gerald. This is a farmer. Yes. You're welcome, Gerald. Yes. Okay. Meet Mitch Wanka. So, Mr. Lavasco, are yes. these our records? Yes, these are our farm records. Good, good. Mm. Uh, show us. Tell us how you do it. So, I have three types of records here. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the records is the guiding records. So okay. how I manage my birds. Okay. Then this one is the sales records. Ah. Yes. Okay. And I have the feed records. Oh. Okay. The feeding records also with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps an emergency. Yes. That is specifically related, handled by me. Mm -hmm. I put it in my diary. Oh. So this is what I have on the farm. Uh -huh. Yes. Mr. Gerald. Yes. We have three books. Are we on the right track? His records are good, yes. but they are more mixed up. We have production records mm -hmm. in the same book as uh, sales, uh, sales and, and also feeds. 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 Yes. They are all oh. jack packed together. They are all packed together. Mm. So I think we would need another book where we can separate production mm -hmm. and then we have uh, income mm -hmm. and expenses oh. okay. with its own book. Okay. Uh, with Mr. Lavasco, the only thing we need to do now is now maybe break uh, this single entry Entry-day daily transactions yes. now into a more general ledger. Okay. The general ledger mm. is one whereby he will record now, he will move, you see those subtotals he's been giving you? Yes. We shall pick all those subtotals and move them into a single ledger, which uh, can couch it for us at least monthly oh. and also yearly. yearly. Okay. So we shall have an accumulated figure mm. of the whole year. Then we shall have all those records, uh, sales mm. as, a, as, a, as a whole figure, okay. uh, purchase of feed as one figure, mm. labor mm. also and different. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, this is what Mr. Lavasco <coughs> has been recording. Yes. Mm -hmm. But now this is a more simplified single right. entry book. Mm. Okay. We have a column for item where you can write the receipt numbers. Mm. We have a column for the dates. We have a description. Then we have... Uh, a column for the amount of payment. Mm. Then we also have a column for the amount of the income you received. Yeah. So it is recording both, both. Yes. income and also the expense. Then we also have a column for remarks or notes. Mm. This is where you kind of decongest this other part of the, uh, the, columns of, of the columns and write all the information you think that is relevant to that specific Spe transaction. transaction. So, Mr. General, yes. what you've been talking about, is it something to this um, effect? Yes, yes. Mm? Yeah. Something like this. So, this would even be much more good for him because mm. now this is more of a and this is cash inflow okay. and also cash outflow. outflow. Yes. Because it is indicating what we are bringing in okay. and what we are actually putting, putting out, out, the mm. money we are putting out. Mm. So, it's more of a cash flow. Okay. Yes. Oof. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gerald. You're welcome. I am happy that Mr. Lavasco is going to be a thriving and successful farmer with all this knowledge and information. And as for you at home, you can get in contact with us on Aishamba. Ah, Mr. Lavasco, how did you like our visit? I've liked your visit. It has been of importance to me yes. because of the expertise, the guidance yes. that I will put into practice for maximum Yields. Ha! Ah, unfortunately, our time is up. We have to leave. Oh. But we promise we'll come back. Okay, bye. Wonderful. We'll see you, see you again. <laughs> okay. See you next time. Bye. And as for mm. you at home, we'll catch you on the next episode of Shamba Shepop Uganda! Uganda.